Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignertechtips.com. Well, we've got a cool little image to text effect for you today. We've got some images here when I hover over the little blue section here. It's going to expand and show us some text there. When I let go, it's going to roll back off. Really easy to do. Nice little eye-catching thing to have on your site. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, let's go down and start building. I've got a section here, the blue tab. Inside, I've got a row. Let's just delete this row and we'll start from scratch. So to my section, I'm going to add a new little row. I'm going to use a single column for mine today. Inside that column, I'm going to use a little blurb module. Obviously, Put your title in there, whatever text you want in there. This is a regular text field, so you can bold, italicize, make bullet lists, add media, make titles if you want to. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. Just down below there, I'm going to use an icon rather than an image. So image and icon, I'm going to switch the little switch there from no to yes. Obviously, you can use any icon you want for expediency. I'm just going to use this one today, same one as I used before. If you want your module to link somewhere, when they click on it, you put your link in down below here. You can link the title to one place and the whole module to somewhere else if you want, or same link if you want. For the whole module, put your link in there, the title there. Always best practice, if you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off site to somebody else's site, open it in a new tab. That way your site's going to stay open. If we roll down, we've got background. I'm going to give mine a simple blue background. And there we have it right there. Okay, well, I want to turn everything white so I can see it. So let's go to our design tab now. Image and icon. Well, I want the icon color to be white. That's great. But I also want it to be on the left hand side. So image and icon placement here. I'm going to flip it from top to left. That's great. I want to make my icon width wise about 50 pics. So I'm just putting 50. It'll put in the pics for you. And remember the size that your icon is because we'll use it in a minute to do a little calculation. Now the actual content's not taking up 100%. It's taking up about 550 pics. So still in design, let's close up image and icon here. I'm going to go down to sizing. The blurb module content width by default is 550 there. I'm going to change that 550 to 100%, 100 and the percent sign. Now it's actually taking up a whole of the available space there, which is exactly what I wanted. But I also want to turn that text white. So let's roll up a little bit to the text here. You can do title and body colors separately there in different fonts if you want to. I'm going to change mine from dark to light just in the text. That'll do both the header and the content there. Great, that works for me. Well, sizing wise, I'm going to go down. I'm going to give this a minimum height of 300 pixels. So in the sizing, still under design tab, I'm going to go down to height here, 300 pixels, 300. It already puts it in the percent for you. Because this is what we're going to use to display our image when we do that in a moment. Okay, I want a little bit of padding on the left and a little bit on the right there. So just above sizing, if we close that one, or just below sizing, I should say, we've got spacing here. Padding left, I'm going to give that that's five pixels. Again, I'm just putting in the five. It'll put in the pics. And the right, I want a bit more, say 25 pixels or 20 pixels, whatever you decide to put in yours, obviously. Great. But I also want to push this down so it's sort of more central really and i know this is 300 pixels i know that's 50 pixels so we've got 250 left which is divided by 2 is 125 so if we put 125 pixels padding on the top that should push that down to the middle 125 that's great and obviously adjust it to how you want it there but that's going to work for me today okay well, when we start off, all I want to see is the icon, really. So I've got to give this a width 
when we're not hovering over it, it'll stay about 70 pixels, maybe a bit less. So again, just above spacing, sizing where we were just now, where we put the width in and the height in. Just underneath we've got actual width here. I'm going to put that to, well, let's try 70 pixels. It's done a percentage instead, so just delete the percentage and put PX in for pixels. There we go, we squash it up nicely there. But we can see the content spilling down here. Well, that's okay. Still a little wide on the right hand side. Let's take it down with the little arrows to where we want it. Something like that. I think I used 64 in the last one. We'll leave it like that. That's great. But when we hover over it, I want it to leap back to be the full width to get that hover effect. So, common to all Divi modules, if you hover over the dark writing, but within a module, you'll see some little icons appear. Go to the thing that you want to affect, which is width in our case. Get the little icons up. If there's a little arrow there, we can set a regular state when the mouse is not on it, which we want to be 64. And when we hover over it, I want it to be full width again. So I'm going to put in 100 and the percent sign. And it's gone full width again. If I flip to desktop, it's going to go back there. But I got a feeling we can't see it because it's white on white, but you're going to see that writing right there. So to get rid of that, I'm going to go to the advanced. Going to go to visibility. Horizontal and vertical overflow. I'm going to change both of those to hidden. And that text has disappeared there because anything that outside here is actually hidden. Great. Let's save our changes here. Let's put the image in the background now. To do that, we're going to go into the row. This is where the image is going to reside. Green tab for the row. I'm going to hit the little cog. Under content, content's always where you'll find background. We've got color, gradient, image, which I'm going to use today. Background video, background pattern or background mask. And you can combine several of these together if you want to. I'm going to use an image. And let's pop that fella in there. That's fine, but we've got a little gap at the top of the bottom there, which I really don't want. So to get rid of that, I'm going to go to my design in the row settings, spacing. I'm going to put a zero in the padding top. I'll hit the chain, it'll do the bottom as well. Great. So let's save that. Let's go back into our blur module just to make a few final adjustments here. When you hover over it, sometimes you're going to see that overflow happen. Don't worry about that. I'm going to go in here. Get under the content to our background. We gave it that blue background. I'm going to give it that nice full blue when we're not hovering on it. When we hover on it, I want it to be a little bit see through so we can see a bit of the image behind. So again, let's hover over the dark writing, get the arrows up. Let's click on the hover state. I'm going to click on the color field right here. And they've got a little slider on the right hand side, the variegated slider, that's opacity. I'm going to drag it down so I can see some of that image behind, but I still want to be able to read that text clearly. Yeah, that's going to work for me absolutely fine. And when we go back to desktop, it's going to be that full blue again. Fantastic. Well, that's pretty much all I want to do, but the time it takes to go from desktop to hover by default, 300 milliseconds, which is pretty quick, just under a third of a second. I want to slow it down for a bit of drama. To do that, go over to your advanced tab, down to transitions. There's a the default 300 mils. I'm going to take that up to about three quarters of a second, 750. You can slide, you can type in a value like I did there. You can also increment up and down the little arrows right there. Don't want any delay, want it to happen as soon as they put their mouse on it. And the speed curve I'm going to use is easy and ease out. They're all slightly different. Some will work better in certain situations than others. Ease in out is my go-to for my hover effects. Great. Okay, well, that's fine. That's going to work perfectly on desktop. If you want to use this on tablet and mobile, you may want to adjust the little bit of padding we've got there certainly on mobile. So while we're in here, let's hit the purple button. 
make sure it's 64 pixels on mobile also. And for mobile, we're going to go down to spacing. Make sure that we're on mobile view. And I'm perhaps just going to give it 25 pixels on the top for mobile. Let's save our changes. Go back to desktop view. Okay, if we've done everything correctly, we should be good to go. And to duplicate this, just duplicate your section or row and put in the content that you want there. Let's save draft and exit the visual builder. And roll on down, there we have it. When we roll over, it's gonna expand, be a little opaque so we can see the image and we can read the text. And obviously click on it if you've got a link on there. When we take the mouse off, it's gonna disappear back there. And that's a great little eye-catching feature to have on your site. People are mousing around, that sort of thing happens. It's going to get their attention pretty quickly. And it'll work equally well on iPad and phone. If I hit my F12 key here. Here we have it on uh, an iPad Air. Of course, I'll have to click rather than hover. That works perfectly. And we've adjusted the padding on mobile. So if I flip to a mobile now, I've got the icon a bit close to the top. When I click on it, it's going to expand. Gives them more room for the actual text there. Perfect. So there you go, guys. Here's how to create a great little text image hover effect using a little blurb module there. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechdips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.